I'd like to say thank you to IDA for uh, inviting me to participate to this International Bad Sky Week uh, where I present uh, uh, some of our uh, last uh, uh, studies uh, on the field. The first is a, a short uh, mm, presentation on uh, our, uh, the war, our world atlas of artifici artificial night sky brightness um, here you can see the color coding uh, um, that uh, in uh, steps of twofold increases uh, uh, show how bad is the situation or how good it is uh, starting from the best uh, where uh, is the black and the gray and the blue, but progressively worse uh, toward the green, yellow, orange, red, pink, uh, and white, and so on. As you can see, the worst uh, um, sites on Earth are uh, those I am uh, evidencing here and in more details in the following um, slides. But firstly, I'd like to show you how is uh, um, produced the World Atlas. We started with uh, the data from uh, the Suomi National Polar Platform satellite that uh, give us uh, how much light is going up in the atmosphere. But with a model developed by Pier Antonio Cinzano, um, we uh, compute how much of this light is uh, diffused back uh, toward the observer and using three different uh, uh, upward function here. This one, the other is uh, here toward low angles and the other is here to our angles uh, in between and we produced for each uh, zone on earth uh, three maps here here and here and uh, comparing these maps uh, with uh, a lot of uh, um, citizen scientist uh, measurements uh, and also uh, check it with uh, the professional uh, data sets um, produced by the National Park Service, we calibrated uh, the atlas to obtain uh, the best uh, upward function and also the best uh, correlation with uh, the real situation during the uh, typical um, clear night uh, and transparent night. Here we can see a detail of the uh, North America and as you can see the east it is, more, is the most polluted part of the United States as are uh, the mm, part uh, of California and uh, the, uh, facing the Pacific. We, have, we still have uh, uh, in the west of the United States um, places with uh, a really dark sky but uh, more on this later. The same happens uh, in South America also in the part uh, of um, Chile where the uh, big uh, um, telescopes are, we uh, experience a very dark sky, for example, uh, in uh, Cerro Paranalo, Cerro Armazones, but uh, we need to pay attention because uh, a lot of uh, new installation are uh, put uh, in, uh, in operation there and we need to pay attention to protect uh, the skies in uh, Atacama Desert. This is Africa with the north part uh, the most polluted and especially in um, Egypt and also in uh, South Africa. These are mostly um, fires from uh, oils well. The 
East is uh, very, very light polluted, especially in South Korea, Japan, part of China and um, India and Pakistan. Australia is uh, fairly dark, I mean, uh, at least most of it is fairly dark, as it is uh, uh, New Zealand. In this slide, I would like to show you a comparison, as in the following, between uh, uh, the effect uh, um, of the old-fashioned uh, sodium light and the new bright uh, white uh, LEDs. So, uh, having the same uh, lighting levels at, uh, on the streets, but changing from uh, um, the mix of lights that were typical uh, several years ago um, and comparing it uh, to the uh, effect uh, of the white LEDs we will have a two to three fold increase in the sky brightness as it is perceived by the dark adapted eye and here is a close-up of uh, the northern part of Italy I live in this city uh, just in the middle of this uh, region that is the Padana Plain one of the most light polluted so you can understand my hate toward this uh, form of, of pollution um, this is a, a simulation of uh, what will happen uh, changing to 4000 Kelvin LEDs to 3000 Kelvin LEDs that is uh, slightly better and to uh, a PC amber LEDs having the same illuminance and the same luminance on the roads this is the effect on our dark adapted eyes looking at the, the night sky with three different spectra of the installed lens this other slide show the potential effects on the melatonin production of two different type of lights uh, even in this case with the same um, photopic lighting levels but let's have a look uh, a closer look to the um, situation of the entire sky because our maps shows our maps show the situation uh, at zenith so directly overhead in this point for example as this is a fisheye image of uh, the night sky here we are in a um, point with a fairly good um, night sky uh, depicted in green here but if we look uh, closely we can see that the part near the zenith is still fairly dark but toward the horizon the situation is much worse and this is also visible for example going to Deton Valley National Park as you can see here we are in the black part of our atlas so the darkest but even if the zenith is uh, completely natural we have a huge glow from las vegas toward the east and another glow toward south southwest toward los angeles and here we can see a comparison between not the sky brightness but the uh, light flux emitted per capita so how much uh, um, is the pollution produced for each inhabitant in Europe and in the United States USA is on average uh, um, much more polluting than Europe for example is three times more polluting per capita than the average of Europe and five times more than Germany that is one of the 
most beaches in uh, Europe. And we produced a global rank taking into account uh, the average sky brightness in counties and in uh, mm, provinces in uh, Europe. The other parameter is the light flux per capita that I already showed to you. And the other one is uh, the light uh, flux uh, per dollar of uh, income. And we get uh, a global rank where we uh, listed the, the good provinces, as you can see here, most of them are in Germany. The bad, as you can see, a lot of them are in Portugal um, and Italy and uh, the ugly, the worst of all. The same we made in, uh, in the United States with uh, all the more than 3,000 uh, counties listed in this uh, rank. So I have a message of hope from this because uh, if we will follow, follow the good examples a lot of reduction can be obtained on light pollution and also if we add fully shielding and the blue light control we can reduce also the pollution producing in the already virtuous counties and provinces we can use adaptive lighting in order to reduce during the night uh, the lighting levels to what is really needed the technology may help uh, us with, uh, for example, the self-driving cars that will have not necessity to have a, a road lighting. And uh, I think that uh, is needed is to reduce the lighting levels prescribed by the standard norms in. Uh, especially in Europe. But there is a really huge new problem. I think that it is the ugliest of all now, and it is the peril due to the satellite mega constellations. One of them, the Starlink by SpaceX, uh, is aimed to produce uh, now 12,000 um, satellites with uh, 30,000 more in the future and I think it is the death blow to the night and the starry sky if it is not stopped immediately wherever in the world you be your night will be spoiled and it cannot be permitted uh, to few bureaucrats at uh, the Federal Commission on Communication to decide for all the humanity and to ruin, to destroy what it is uh, a cultural heritage of uh, incommensurable uh, value. And so this should be stopped now and should be forbidden for all the future projects too. Here we can see the effect of the first launch of satellite on the Cerro Tololo uh, CCD um, in Chile and on the right we will have a simulation uh, of uh, what will happen when the 12,000 satellites, not the total of 42,000 that uh, SpaceX uh, uh, would like to, to launch uh, at last. And uh, probably we will have more fake stars, moving stars that are satellites than the real stars of our old-fashioned good starry sky. 
So my uh, final message is to try to stop uh, this uh, uh, awful uh, situation and uh, bring back uh, the hope for a uh, starry sky for the future generation. Thank you.